hey there everyone welcome back to my channel today i want to introduce you to two tools i love to use when building web applications what are they you might ask they are next.js and pocketbase after ignoring the hype for so long i have given up last year after one of the projects i was involved in at work needed next.js as a dependence after struggling with it first few weeks i was able to understand its pros and cons but after working with next.js for more than a year now i'm having a hard time using vanilla react js did i call react vanilla i'm sure you get what i mean anyway i'm here to show you how fast and easy it is to get working web application with authentication using next.js and pocketbase let's stop talking and let's get to work the first thing we need to do is set up our next project using npx create next app command this will take some time depending on your internet speed let us fast forward to when our project creation is complete so i'm going to start with the middleware.js or .ts file. This file is where the magic happens to keep users from accessing the protected page. The middleware.js or .ts is a special file that Next.js uses to call before every request and you can filter what type of URL paths you want to handle using the config object you export from this file. In this case, this merger handles all the paths except those that start with api dash next static or image and favicon the most important part of the middleware file is the middleware function which takes request as the first argument this parameter gives us access to all the info we need from each http call that matches the merger in the config before we do anything we check if the user is logged in using the is authenticated method of the database class which is a wrapper around the pocket base we are using i'll get to how we achieve this in a second but let's go through this file first so on line 7 we check the current request path starts with auth if that's true it means we don't need to enforce anything and let the user request continue as is without any change if the request is to other paths we need to confirm the user is logged in or we will redirect them to forward slash or forward slash login url so they can log in if that was not the case and the user is logged in we let them proceed with the request this is a simple but effective way to keep users from accessing protected routes in your web application now let's move to the database file to see the magic behind our pocket based wrapper class we used earlier to access the is authenticated method the database client has the field client which represents the instance of pocket base we instantiate in the constructor of the file so we can reuse the same instance throughout the app the database client also has a few methods that simplify our access to the database such as the authenticate method which takes email and password then calls the pocket base using the javascript sdk to confirm the user exists and provided details are correct the register method handles sign up of new users to simplify things it only uses the minimum required fields which are the email and password you can expand to include more fields the create method of pocket base collection also require password confirm field so again to simplify things we are passing the user provided password the is authenticated method we talked about before is declared here and does the following it takes the cookie store to check the current user's cookies to see if the user is logged in or not and it uses the default key for the authentication cookie for pocket base which is pp underscore auth then using the load from cookie from the built-in auth store of pocket base to load the cookie information of the current user then check the auth store dot is valid which does all the checks and confirmations we need to confirm whether the user is logged in or not the last method in this class which is get user is similar to the is authenticated method but instead of returning a boolean value it returns the auth store dot model which is is an object with the details of the logged in user so next we are going to use the next 13 built-in api routes to add two rest api endpoints to handle the login and sign up of the user but before we do that let's create the forms from 
sign up and login which in this case are too similar to make things easier to understand in the login page component we need three states to keep track of the form and handle errors the first state is the email so we declare the email and set email using react.use state which we set to an empty string as the default value the second state is the password and we do the same as we did for the email then we declare the error state to be able to show error messages under the form. Let's now move on to the HTML part or JSX part of the component. The first field of the form is going to be the email input with its label. So we need two things in this input, which are the value which we pass the email and the on change event we need to listen to to update the email state using set email. We do a similar thing with the password input with the value set to password and the on change event to use the set password to update the state. Finally, we bind the on submit event of the form to on submit handler function, which is going to take the event as the first argument so we can prevent the default behavior of the on submit. We create an object we named form with the email and password fields so we can pass that to the REST API endpoint when we call. So we call the built-in fetch to call the endpoint and pass the following configuration options the method which is the http for post in this case and the content type header as application forward slash json because we need to submit the form as json object then we pass the form to the body as json string we check if the response went okay if it's not we inform the user of the issue by setting the error message as failed to authenticate user if that was not the case and everything went well we would get the data object which we check if it has a token field if not that means something went wrong so we keep the user in the login form but if we have the token we will redirect the user to the home page using the route.push from use route hook we imported from next forward slash navigation the sign up component is exactly the same as the login form we created now the only difference is the api endpoint call is changed from login to the sign up endpoint you can get the full code on github link in the description now let's move on to the next 13 api routes to handle the request from both login and sign up form to create an endpoint with next 13 you need to create a special folder structure for both the endpoint handlers and the url under our app directory or folder we need to add nested folder to the app api or login route.ts file which is going to be mapped to forward slash api forward slash or forward slash login so let's see what we need to add to the route.ts file we just created we need to name the function to the same name as the http bar we need to handle so you can have multiple functions for for each method for example get post patch delete and so on in our case we need to create an exported function with the name post which takes the request as the first argument so we have access to all the details from the request such as the form we submitted from the login form we destructure the email and password fields from the request.json function call then call the db authenticate function to let pocket based client take care of the rest then await for the response to get back the record which is the user info and the token which we will need to save in the cookie so the next request from the current user will have the required token to make sure they are logged in and have access to the protected pages after we set the cookie we return the record of the user info as the http response the sign up endpoint follows the same process except the parent directory or folder of the route.ts is named sign up instead of login if you need to go deeper and see the full web application the github repository link is in the description if this video was helpful please help us by hitting the subscribe button if this was not as good as you expected please hit the dislike button so we can do better and comment what we did wrong if we deserve a like please hit the like button if you watched until here you are here to us and we really appreciate this please comment pocket base rocks so we know you finished this video thanks for watching and see you in our next video